Oh, well, well, good afternoon. And yes, I am guilty as charged. <laughs> but you didn't come here to find out about the continuing saga of my walking under the influence of Lucasade. No. I wanted to talk once again about Insulate Britain because they, I guess at this point, they're a bit like the running joke that's A, not even funny, B, is repetitive as hell, and C, has now become even more obnoxious. And what do I mean by this? Well, as you well know, Insulate Britain has been blocking main roads such as the M25, which one particular protester I'm going to be talking about today was blocking himself. And it's actually one of the nine, which one of the, the papers, I believe, actually mistakenly put nice instead of nine. Anyway, there was one guy, who I'll just refer to as Ollie, who was sentenced to prison for contempt of court for the injunction that he he broke, which basically stopped them from going on the M25 to block the road. Frankly, he should have faced the other charges as well, under the Highway Code Act. But of course, when is our justice system ever just? But I digress. <clears throat> so, he was arrested, sentenced to prison, and now it turns out, him and his family have set up a crowdfunder. That's right. You couldn't make this fucking bollocks up. You really couldn't. So, Ollie has set up a crowdfunder, and his family, who you'll find many articles of this, just search them up, don't just take my word for it. There are a load of newspapers, mainstream media, or mainstream newspapers, I should say, that are basically covering this, which are saying that a family begs the public, in one way of putting it. But, Ollie has received a crowdfunder, and it turns out over the last couple of days, unfortunately, some sheeple have actually contributed to this thing. It's currently on £8,000 from when I'm making this video, which is around, if I check the time, 20 past 1. <clears throat> so... He's already received, as a result of this crowdfunder, pretty much eight grand. Give or take 20 quid, because it was actually about 7 nine eighty when I last saw it. Anyway, this guy has already been receiving 8,000 pounds, and there's 21 days left on this crowdfunder. Yeah. And the reason that this crowdfunder has been set up, I mean, when you think of a crowdfunder, you think of... I don't know, someone who's terminally ill and wants to raise funds to do something they want to do on their bucket list before they die, or somebody who is about to celebrate a really big day, like a big wedding day or something, or perish the thought, maybe even a birthday for a child that maybe has mental health problems or some really rare medical disease that hurts them in some way or another. <clears throat> you don't think that a crowdfunder is being used to pay for somebody's fucking rent. That's right. Ollie's crowdfunder was to raise, I think it was like seven and a half thousand, eight thousand pounds for him to be able to pay his rent while he is in prison for committing multiple crimes in which he's only been charged with one. Now, as I said, I could be wrong on this, but last time I checked, it was against the 1989 Highway Code Act to both block the roads and to block the roads for emergency services. <clears throat> and it would be completely far-fetched for me to say he was one of the people who was walking into oncoming traffic. Because I don't know that, because I wasn't there, and I haven't seen him otherwise. But, it doesn't change the fact that this guy was actively blocking the roads. Which is against the Highway Code Act. And yet he's been given, at the current moment, £8,000 and counting to pay for his rent. 
You know, there's there's something. I think there's a saying that's coming to mind. You know, I think it's I think it's an old one, and I think I think I I could be wrong here, but I think the the familiar saying, "If you can't do the cr- the time, don't do the crime," springs to mind. Or more accurately, if you can't afford rent, don't commit crimes in the middle of the fucking highway. Why is it this crowdfund has been set up? Oh, and another thing. Another thing. Because this actually directly relates to this. Crowdfunder, the same people who are basically allowing his crowdfunder to take place blocked £60,000 worth of funding towards the Insulate Britain campaign because it was, well, they were accusing in, uh, Insulate Britain, the people who set up the, the crowdfunders, they accused them of funding criminal activity. That is gold dust. Actually, no, it's just a golden fucking turd, is what it is. And I honestly wish I had alcohol in here instead of orange juice. At least then I could truly say I'm sloshed, and then I'd actually be able to forget about the whole thing. Anyway, this news does not surprise me in the slightest. The fact that the crowdfunder have already blocked £60,000, and yet they're allowing this to go through. They're allowing this man to have a GoFundMe, uh, sorry, not a GoFundMe, a crowd funder to be set up. If someone like Tommy Robinson had a crowd funder set up to, I don't know, let's say he had another court case because he's being persecuted by the establishment, let's say, for the sakes of argument, <clears throat> and he set up a crowd funder. How long do you think it would take for them to shut that down? 24 hours? 12? 6? Not even? I guarantee you if it was him, they'd shut it down almost instantly. And yet this guy's crowdfunder has been going on for at least 48 hours. And my personal opinion on this, which is subjective as always, is that criminals like... Ollie should not get a penny. If the circumstances were different, let's say instead of blocking the road, let's say Insulate Britain's main cause was to, I don't know, let's say reduce CO2 commission, uh, commissions. <laughs> I never knew they could do that. Anyway, if their objective was to, let's say, reduce CO2 emissions or Reduce the amount of coal being used in plants or what have you. If that was their goal, then maybe donations to a crowdfunder, as long as it didn't involve blocking the road, would actually be justified. But here, where we have a criminal, basically, because that's what Ollie is, we have a criminal who's blocking the roads, stopping people from commuting he has no right to that money quite frankly and the fact his family are getting involved in this as well should speak volumes oh and you know what's really funny you know what's the icing on this shit cake and you are not this is a game changer for me his family are worth millions Yes, they own businesses. They're worth millions of pounds. Now, in their defence, they want their boy, Ollie, to be uh, independent. And he himself wants to be independent. He shouldn't be, or shouldn't have to ask for handouts. I'm sure that's how my mum raised me as well. She wants me to be independent and all that shit. But I digress. The fact that these guys are worth millions and they are asking the public 
to help fund this man to pay for his rent while he's in prison is absolutely hilarious. Forget a comedy act. They're the whole fucking circus. <clears throat> Surely these money-making wankers... And ironically, this goes against what I just said about being independent and all that. But why don't these people chip in some of their millions? They can clearly do so. I mean, it's not like they're homeless or on the verge of losing their home. Or people like me who don't even have a five-figure sum. And I don't have to disclose that, but... Hey-ho, I've decided to anyway. Anyway, these guys have millions. They can surely afford to pay the cost of his rent. <clears throat> I mean, it is technically an emergency for them because obviously he won't be able to pay it while he's in prison. But as I said, he doesn't deserve a fucking penny personally. That's what annoys me more than anything. The fact that... We have wankers like this who have the money and they also have the audacity to ask you, the British taxpayer, to fund their son's rent. I think that speaks for itself. And all those sheeple out there, <clears throat> because I am going to say this how it is and you're not going to like it one fucking bit. But those sheeple who have funded this crowdfunder, you are basically funding terrorism. I said it back before in my previous videos, I will say it here again now. Any money that goes towards insular Britain is money that is going towards terrorism. Like I said, it may not be the violent kind where people blow themselves up with bombs or drive motor vehicles into people or stab people with knives or shoot people with guns. It's none of that. But what they're still doing is disrupting the country. The same as any other terrorist act would. Insular Britain is a pseudo-terrorist group. And Ollie was willing to join the cause of these terrorists and block the roads himself. So if we were to get really serious, that would imply he's a pseudo-terrorist as well. Because he was willing to disrupt the country. He was willing to piss off mothers or fathers driving their kids to school. They were willing to piss off people who work in the emergency services and are transporting critically ill people to hospitals, but they're being delayed because of people like him. Remember, one woman ended up partially paralysed on the back of delays while she was having a stroke. And there was somebody who was in a taxi, I believe, who wanted to get up to the hospital because I think his mother had cancer. That was something new that I found out. I mean, surely this should make your blood boil. It fucking makes my blood boil. The only reason I'm not exploding right now, other than the fact that I'm controlling my waistline. Anyway, the only reason I'm not exploding right now is because I am in a residential area, a lot of people here, and I don't want to disturb them. But if there was nobody around here, no houses to breach the peace or what have you, I'd sh probably be shouting at the top of my lungs here. And as I said before and will say again, if those wankers come to Norwich and I'm in my break, or... I'm not currently working and I'm around, I'll happily dra drag the wankers off the road myself. But these guys are terrorists. They deserve only condemnation from the British nation. 
maybe I should be a new speaker. Anyway, they only deserve condemnation for their actions. They have blocked the roads, disrupted commuters, disrupted emergency services, disrupted the transportation of inc incredibly important supplies such as medicine, as well as cause outrage among the British people, which led to them being inked, which led to them being pushed around by the cars. And I mentioned that some of these people did walk into oncoming traffic. They should be thankful nobody's died yet. And I will say that until I'm blue in the face. These bastards should be thankful no one's been killed yet. Whether it's because of an accident or whether because somebody decides to take the law into their own hands. And as I've said before, I'm not going to repeat myself, but I will say this once. I have never advocated violence and I never will against anyone whether they be an ordinary person, whether it be the police, the establishment, whether it be insular Britain wankers, I have never advocated for the violence against them. And I would never justify it. I have always said, though, that I will completely understand why people would end up doing it. So no, I do not advocate for violence against insular Britain. Ironically, this is in light of Insular Britain at one point even saying that there would be violence if peaceful protests were not allowed. Yes, one of the spokespeople actually said that. That there would be violence if they couldn't peacefully protest. What say you, police? What say you, British government? What say you, fake street media? What say you on that particular point? I mean, that's the way I look at it. I bet if I were to say, even though I'm quite small, I bet if I were to say I'd advocate for violence, I bet I'd be arrested pretty fucking quick, as I'd expect to be. However, it seems that when left-wing organisations or ignorant sheeple in causes like Insular Britain say it, Nothing seems to get done. It's like how I said with the riots and all that. How when there's a quote-unquote right-wing protest, the police respond almost immediately in full riot gear, battens at the ready, ready to bash anybody who shows the slightest sign of overexcitedness. They're willing to kettle people in and then incite the people to attack which is not part of the police's job, by the way. And when it comes down to the terrorist group, as I will call them from now on, Insular Britain, because that is basically what they are, even if it's not through violence. But when it comes down to the terrorist group that is Insular Britain, it's a kid gloves approach. The two-tier policing needs to stop. Like I said before, I've, and this is actually the third time now, British police, stop taking a kid gloves approach to these wankers, give them one warning to get off the road or be arrested. If none of them comply, arrest them. If they act like they're complying and then move back into the road, arrest them. If they get out of the road and then move on, leave them. Just so long as they have been warned, and thank God this is finished. Anyway, as long as they move on, they don't block another road, you then have no reason to arrest them. But I'll also say this point again. Either you, the British police, whether it's Manchester or London, start doing your job, or the British people will do your job for you. And believe you me, these people will not be as kid gloves friendly as you lot have been. Trust me on that much. Bottom line is, 
Ollie should, well, he's barking. Anyway, Ollie should not be receiving a single penny from the British people. And those sheeple that have decided to give Ollie money should be charged with funding terrorism. Because that's essentially what they're doing. Even if Insulate Britain have not yet been prescribed as a terrorist group. They are funding terrorism. By blocking the roads, preventing supplies from getting through, that is what they are doing. And I know there are going to be some people who will say, oh, well, you're just being too harsh on them, and these people don't know any better. No, I think a lot of them will know better, considering how long this shit has been going on now, the last couple of months. These people have been completely inconsiderate with how this this country operates. They have been completely inconsiderate of the British people who are doing their day-to-day -day lives. They have been completely inconsiderate in regards to their own safety and the safety of said motorists on the motorways. So quite frankly, unless these people have literally been hiding under a rock they don't have internet, they don't have TV, they can't find out what's the latest going on. If they tick all three of those boxes, fine. Maybe I am being too harsh on them. But if they can find out about this stuff, and then they decide to fund these wankers, these terrorists, they should be charged for funding terrorism. Is it a controversial point? Oh, damn right. <laughs> damn fucking right. I know it's a controversial opinion. But you know what? Our government is way too sensitive. We're all about the safe spaces and, oh, we mustn't hurt other people's fee-fees. Oh, we've got to watch what we say on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all this bollocks. The only time I feel people should do that is if they are within a business, a major business, maybe a property management firm, maybe they work for a major railway or major construction company or what have you, then it might be understandable. But somebody like me, working for a small business, working every hour God gives me in my nine to five job, Nah. I shouldn't have to watch what I have to say. I shouldn't watch what I say full stop. And I think a lot of people in this generation are soft. And they need to grow a pair of balls, whether up here or down there. And they actually need to understand, we need to get tough. People like Ollie... People like him are poncy little milk drinkers, to put it bluntly. They're people who think they're making change, but they are actually harming their country. They are sheeple who think they're doing the country a service, but are instead turning their country against them. And I'm probably going to need to comb this when I get home. Anyway, they are people who think they've done a service, but they're not. They are people who think obstructing roads, endangering lives, preventing critical supplies is actually doing the country a service. I'll tell you who's done a real fucking service, David Perry, to touch on him one more time. David Perry, when he prevented hundreds of people from being bombed, he did a service, not you insular terrorists. You probably don't like what I'm saying, insular Britain. And I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube tries to silence this. After all, they've been doing that with my Poison XIX stuff back in the past. In the last couple of months, they did. Gave me two strikes. Which, thankfully, are going to disappear now. And I am actually back down to zero. But uh, strikes aside, I wouldn't be surprised if they took this video down. Anything that happens to Insulate Britain, they're only doing this to themselves, quite frankly. 
I'll be disappointed in it if, in, if anything happens to these people. But I'm not going to shed a tear. Because it isn't going to be long. We're already seeing massive protests across the world regarding Poison XIX and the lockdowns and the shots of the antidote and people being taken off the dole in Australia because they're not having the shot of the antidote. Or in Austria, they're planning in, in 2022 of February to bring in forced medical treatments. There are protests across the globe. Melbourne, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Italy, Britain. So, the way you have to look at it, Insular Britain, is you are basically lighting a match in a cave full of dynamite and gas leaks. One lit match, gas leak, boom. And you're all going to be ripped apart by the explosion. Metaphorically speaking, of course. But Ollie does not deserve a single penny towards his rent, quite frankly. As I said, if he didn't want the time, if he didn't want to do the time, and if he didn't want to have to worry about rent, he shouldn't have done the crime. It's as simple as that. He should have thought twice before breaking three laws, not the one that the mainstream media only wants to report about, the injunction. As I said, he has committed charges against the British public in the 1989 Highway Act, blocking an emergency services vehicle, as well as, of course, sitting in the middle of the road. He should be facing three charges, and he should be facing a lot longer in prison. And then this will teach him and any other wanker a very harsh lesson as what not to do. I'm willing to bet there are some people out there who are even willing to say, you should be showing compassion to these people. You should be caring for these people. No, I don't care for terrorists. I don't show compassion towards terrorists. I sure as shit wouldn't show compassion towards somebody who is actively damaging this country as a patriot. So the next time you want to speak about compassion, or I'm being too harsh on them, think of those things that I've said. His family has more than enough money. If they cared for their son, and as I said, this is going against what I said before about he should be independent, but I think anybody in an emergency like that or someone's had an accident or whatever, I think family would be more than willing to help to some degree. And I think his family Instead of asking the British public to fund his, his rent, they should put some of their money to good use. They are part of the rich getting richer while the poor get poorer. There's a lot of rain on this thing. Anyway, they are part of the rich getting rich, or richer, I should say, while the poor get poorer. His, their son should be helped out by them, even if only partially. And at least then, once he's served his time, it'll teach him a lesson. Though I think he needs to be taught a much harsher lesson, frankly, with three charges, not one, as I've said. At the end of the day, as I said, we have to get tough with these people because they are damaging the country. They have no consideration for us, these terrorists. And I will keep calling them that, regardless of what anybody says. I will call anybody who supports this man on his crowdfunder terrorists. I'm hoping to God, crowdfunder will stick to what they did in October. I believe it was the 24th. But I'm hoping they will stick to what they did before, where they blocked funds of £60,000 going to Insulate Britain on the back of potential criminal activity. And I hope they're willing 
since he's been charged with criminal activity to have his funds blocked. Because that's what he deserves. Like I said, anybody who breaks the law to this extent, anybody who is willing to endanger other lives or disrupt the country needs to be taught a harsh les lesson. Remember in the world wars, if pr British people deserted from the army, they were shot. If British people, there was even one case in the Battle of Dunkirk, I believe, where one person said they were going to fall back, their commander gave the order to shoot him. While I'm not, while I'm not saying that we should shoot these people, some people would, but I personally wouldn't. I think it's a bit too extreme, if you ask me. Yeah, that's something I never thought I'd be saying. Anyway, I think that's a bit ex extreme. And while I wouldn't have these guys shot, I certainly would have an example made of them. Because that's the only way you're going to stop this. And if they commit violence, then they really will have turned against their country. And they should be treated even more harshly. And taught a lesson. They have threatened violence. They have actively blocked the roads. What was Antifa prescribed as when they committed their violence and all their other shit in the United States? Terrorists. We should follow the same approach as what America's done to Antifa to insulate Britain and the UK. Because once we start coming down hard on these people, and once we start telling them you are not going to keep blocking the roads without consequence, you are not going to have funds towards your acts of criminal activity. You are not going to get away unpunished for ruining the lives of people, potentially. They will start to realise just how alienated they are in this country and how badly you'll be punished if you do anything that goes against the British people. I do fundamentally believe that once we bring down the hammer on these fools and watch that anvil sing, these people will finally have their cause go silent and they will unequivocally learn their lesson not to block the roads or cause major disruption in our country. My name's Dabima, also known as Abatha Rex, and I am, as always, very, very bad news for these insular Britain wankers, the fake stream media, the two-tier policing police force, and of course our government, who still hasn't taken serious action against these guys. And perhaps they should, if they want to aid their own people. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day. And I better get inside before a real fucking storm hits. But remember what I've said, insular Britain. Or is it insular terrorists? If you keep this up, you will get what's coming to you.